This is a 1948 Montgomery Award end table. Uh, it's about uh, 18 by 15. And I just recently bought this at an antique store for 10 bucks. And uh, it's in actually pretty good shape for something this old. And what I'm going to do with this little end table is use it in my office as a, um, I'm going to put uh, my printer on it. I've been looking for something like this for quite a while. And you can see it's in pretty decent shape. There's some scuffs in it. There's some marks in it. But overall, it's... Um, it's in pretty good shape. I think the camera's making it look a little more worn than it really is. It's actually in really, really good cosmetic shape and a little bit of uh, cleaning up and um, work on it uh, will make it in really, really good shape. And so one might ask, well, first of all, why are you showing us a piece of furniture on your channel? Your channel in the past has been dedicated to electronics. And then second of all, how do you know this old table was made by Montgomery Ward? Well, I can tell you. You can't really tell from looking at it. Now there's the back of it. It's like a standard little and coffee table. But, if you do this, and just pull it, voila, there's an airline AM radio. Um, and there's a cord that comes around the back, and actually, um, we're going to plug this in here in a little bit. And uh, we'll see what we get, but it's a very simple... Um, just AM radio with a, you know, the um, AM dial there. Uh, this is not an on-off switch. Okay, it's just a volume switch. And this is a tuning switch. And unfortunately, um, it appears, to, um, I'm hoping that it's just the dial string that's broke on this. Uh, but what's really cool about this is, is when it's plugged in, if it's in this position, the radio is off. And when you pull it down in that position, it triggers it to turn on. So I'm not sure how that works. We're going to get this out. This little radio piece comes out of here. Um, the first thing we'll do is is um, plug it in and see if we get anything. And then the second thing is, is I'll, I'll get the radio out and um, we'll take a look at um, the chassis. I do have, I do have the SAMS for this particular model. And this is an airline 84KR. Mine is a 2510A. Um, the SAMS is from 1949. Okay. But this, this particular piece was made in 1948 and 49. And this is the only photo fact that I could find on it. It's the only information I could, service information I could find anywhere on this. Uh, what's interesting, it says an on off switch volume control. Um, but that is, is not the case. That's not how this operates. Um, it's a very simple All-American 5 radio, 5 tubes. It's um, a Super Heterodyne radio with an IF stage. There are the 5 tubes that we can expect to see. Um, Anyway, we'll look at this a little bit more. We'll look at this a little bit more as we um, take this thing apart 
and uh, take a look at it. Okay, so now we, we have this thing, this end table radio up a little closer to the bench and I've got the cord out. Um, just wanted to show you that this thing has a million mile long cord. Somebody had come along and had um, used black tape and it attached this. I repaired this myself and shrink wrapped it. This is original cord here, which goes into the back of the radio, obviously. And then somebody had put this had put this newer cord on here. So I've got about oh man, longest cord I've ever seen. Probably that's got to be every bit of eight or nine, ten feet of cord. So let's just go ahead and um, plug this in. Um, I haven't tried this radio yet, so we're going to try and see what happens here. So turning it in this position should turn it on. Now I suppose I can get up under there and see if the tubes are coming on. And I do have static. Okay. That's a good sign. I don't have any dial light here. And of course, as I said before, there's the tuning indicator. Um, appears the dial string is broke here, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to tune anything in. But that's okay. What I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, figure out how this comes out, and we'll get this up on the bench and we'll take a look at it um, because it's my intention to um, try to get this this restored and get this playing, and um, also work on this and get it um, cleaned up. Because, like I said, I do want to put it into my office and use it as an everyday piece of furniture. Uh, to put a computer printer on it. Um, but I just thought it was really, really cool. And what's really cool is... And you can just hear that it, it just turned off. So I don't know how it does that. That's kind of interesting. And there, now it's back on. Um, and we'll, we'll look at everything, including this uh, dial cover. Or uh, speaker cover. We may want to replace that as well. As you can see, it's kind of worn there. But it's from 1948. So this thing's pretty old. But just a nice little project that I want to I take on. So let me get the radio out. And, or the radio piece out of this. And we'll take a look at that. And see if it works. Okay, so that was that was real simple. Um, the radio just kind of sits in there, and it sits on a couple of little knobs here, right? And um, there's a couple of metal pieces here that it just rests on, and and simply turns this way and this way. And so here's what we've got. Um, again, it's an airline 5 tube radio made by Montgomery Ward. And uh, here's what the back of it looks like. As you can hear, the neighbor next door sawing on building onto his deck. But we got a nice, uh, nice AM band antenna here, and five tubes, and um, this all looks like it's original. 
That's an original tube. I'm assuming those are original. And that one there is original as well. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, come on, camera. Mm, come on. That's not one to focus, but you can see there that's a Ward's airline tube. <sighs> Looks like there's a dial light right here. And there's nothing in it. No bulb in it. And as I suspected, looking at the tuner, the uh, dial cord is, has been broke. Which is just lovely. I just, nothing more I love to do than string a dial cord, but it's okay. We can take care of that. The tube chart. Pretty simple. One, two, three, four, five tubes. Two uh, IF cans. One's probably an output can. And then a um, tuning condenser. So, speaker. Mm. Permanent magnet. Yeah. So, let's see if this turns on um, by plugging it in. It should, in this position, I would think, turn on. Oh, yeah. You can see the, you can see it lighting up. Now, I don't have a lot of AM stations in my area. There's, there's two or three. So that's what we were getting before when it was in the uh, cabinet. Summerish day, high temperatures get up to 91 degrees. The heat index near 96. Wow. We should stay rain free today, but clouds will be on the increase this evening with overnight temperatures dropping to 72 degrees. Couple Fantastic sound. Now the Longhorns gave me a little bit of hope scattered throughout that game, but at the end of the contest. It's amazing. I lost more than a because it all looks so familiar. Nice and, and strong. Fans, as they lost to Notre Dame 24 to 17. And Miami Hurricane fans, as you got trounced. That is nice, third. nice deep sound. S strong. You can help improve community at HUD.gov slash fair housing. Shared opportunity in every community. A public service message from HUD in partnership with the National Fair Housing Alliance. Chair. This could lead to a catastrophe wow. of epic proportion. Okay, but like I said, there's only a couple of really strong AM stations in my area anymore. Sad to say, um, but this is down in my sh shop where I'm at, and the fluorescent lights in here and all that. Um, this is pulling in AM as as good as anything I've got. Solid state, new, old, or not old. Some sort of 
It's pretty amazing, these guys. They're just never going to be happy. They're chronically miserable. In order to be buried in giant state... Texas game is going to be dramatic of where this football team is by the end of the year. Wow. I think Tom Herman has it on track. Okay. It's just not going to be so this is kind of interesting. Let's like me. see kind of how this works. That brings us to Michigan. Is Michigan Notre Dame indicative of where Michigan Okay, so now I have it pushed in this position like it would be kind of in the cabinet. And it goes off. And do it this way. And it comes back on. Seems to be stuck on the side of the road, unable to get out of uh, out of the ditch. So if Jim Harbaugh can't do it, then then who in the world can? You know the funny thing about okay. freaking out is so a lot of dirt and dust on here and all that, but if it is so emblematic of what you've been dealing with for so long. I just told you Texas has been This should be a fun little thing to, to clean up and uh Michigan lost to Notre Dame. Well, you know, I I'm thinking it needed to be recapped and the line and all that, but how they lost. I'm not real sure. No offense. Strong as it is. Michigan lost a big game against a big time opponent. Let me get a little further apart, get a new dial light in there. Let's see underneath that chassis and see what kind of what kind of components we have under there? Obviously, I'm gonna have to redo this dial string. That's not a big deal. Um, won't be fun, but you know, it's got to be done. I think ten and three, ten and three, and eight and five. Although continually failing to win the big game. Okay, so this is pretty simple to take apart. There's, you know, some screws that went here, here. Took out the knobs. There's a screw there that we're gonna get ready to take out. A knob there, not a screw there, screw there, knob. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I think if we take this out, then this this front piece of wood and maybe even the dial just comes off. And I think I'll, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I was right. Comes off. It just came flying off. So, um, right there is the old uh, speaker cloth. And then, of course, the front wood pieces, which have some blemishes, and that needs to be redone. And uh, it's going to be a, a problem to redo it all. I'll put that aside with the rest of the cabinet because the rest of the cabinet's dirty and needs to be cleaned and go jode and, and all that. And here is the dial cord as well as the, the pointer and uh, new dial string needs to be put on. So that'll be included on how to do that on uh, my Sam's I'm sure this seems to be very loose here um, so I think I can tighten that up looks like there's some rubber gaskets that hold that on um, and this is the speaker, which has a little bit of crack on it, right there. I can work on that. All right, and so then now it looks like that the chassis will come out. Um, there's these metal plates that are on the side here. There's a couple, three screws there. To the chassis and then the chassis is just bolted down or screwed down um, like right there four different ones and we can just pull this whole thing out and um, get a look underneath at the chassis all right so there's the dial cord and uh, 
So let me get that, let me get that chassis out. We'll take a look at that. Okay, now I've got all the um, side pieces off, the front piece off, and um, the dial string off, as well as the pointer, which we'll have to put back on. Uh, and you can see, um, yeah, there's quite a bit of dirt and stuff on here, on the tubes. Um, there's a big crack in the speaker. I'll have to fix that. One thing about the uh, uh, tuning condenser, looks like there's some rubber grommets here. Of course, those are from 19. Those are from 1948. They're they're shot, so I have to figure out a way to uh, to replace those. And now we can get a look at the bottom of the chassis so there's the main electrolytic cap and the rest of the underside of the chassis there's a wax cap here looks like a cathode bypass cap um, there's a few wax caps in here doesn't really look like anybody's been in here very simple 5 tube radio. Uh, I think this is a triple electrolytic. Looks like a electrolytic here. I'm not sure. That's point. What does that say? Point zero five. One thing I wanted to show you is right here. I don't know if you can see this, but it looks like a little switch with a mercury ball in it. That's how they're doing the on and off. Let's see if I can get focused in there. See that? That's the on and off switch right there. Um, don't see much of anything really burnt in here. I see no evidence that there has been a lot of use on this thing. There's that on off switch again. Very interesting how that works. Uh, but here's the bottom line. I am not going to do anything to this. <gasps> and I can hear everybody going, oh my god. Um, but I see no reason to do anything to it. It's very simple. I may check the resistance on some of these resistors, but the way this thing is playing, I just really don't see anything, any reason why to do anything to it. Clean the switch. Clean that volume control pot. Clean it up. And uh, go from there. One thing I learned from watching Shanga 066 who if you don't watch him, you need to. Um, a lot of things uh, about these old components are okay. And you don't necessarily have to to change everything out just cause and I know there's gonna be a lot of people come at me and say oh man you're crazy you need to change all those caps well maybe but you know what this this is a serious drunk set there's no transformer to take out uh, the only thing I was looking at was uh, a safety cap but I just won't keep this thing plugged in. I'm not real sure with that funky switch right there and how that's all rigged up. How I would do a safety cap in between there. Um, so I probably just won't keep it plugged in except when I want to use it. I'm just going to clean this thing up. I'm going to do some repair on the speaker. I'm going to re-string um, the dial, obviously. Do that. 
I'm going to replace these rubber grommets. I'm going to clean this whole thing up. I might even paint these sides. Um, I'll make it look great, but I'm just going to leave this thing alone. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to get the dust off of here. This is a great AM antenna. There's some, a lot of dust on here, but uh, yeah, there's a few pieces here that need to be maybe bent a little bit back into shape, but I'm not going to mess with this. But um, I will, I will walk you through how it, how it goes, and then um, how I eventually put it back into service. Okay. All right. So that's the airline 84K R2510A. This is going to be the end of part one, but uh, I'll be back. Okay. Until next time, thanks for watching. Oh, before I leave, um, one thing I just wanted to... I put the dial light in there and wanted to go one more time on... Just maybe demonstrating how the speaker is working. I mean, you're out on Newstalk 1400 KFRU. That's a look at KFRU News. I'm David Gaines for Newstalk 1400 Are you? I can actually see that speaker I coming know. apart at the scene there. And other stuff. The Closers. Join the talk now. 800-229-53. But the dial light works. We'll fix that. So until next time, hey... Thanks for watching.